So we're here today at the Jesuit block, Manzana Jesuitica, and, uh, no, Jesuitica, Manzana Jesuitica. And uh, maybe someone could correct me, but I tried to figure out why it's called Manzana, because as far as I know, Manzana means apple which would make this the Jesuit apple and not the Jesuit block. Perhaps Manzana meant something different in like old Spanish. Um, I'm not sure, maybe someone knows. If you do, put it in the comments down below. But anyway, we're here today at Manzana Jesuitica. Jesuitica. Manzana Jesuitica. This is uh, a very, very old building, a church right behind me, very old. Um, it was built, I think in 1671 it was completed, but of course, they started building it much earlier, uh, and it is part of what is referred to as the Jesuit block. Now, after they founded the city here, the old part of the city, um, around Plaza San Martin in 1580, within uh, a couple of decades, uh, Jesuit settlers had settled here, just a few blocks away, and they've preserved some of the buildings. I could turn the camera around, and I'm going to try and stick it through the bars here so you can actually see the building and this is a very very old church and now I wanted to actually get inside and film inside as well uh, because this is preserved by the uh, University the National University of Cordoba um, but it is also uh, as of the year 2000 a UNESCO World Heritage Site so uh, actually getting in there and filming inside for a YouTube channel is a little bit more uh, like trickier than I thought it was going to be. I went in and I asked the uh, two nice ladies who were at the um, reception desk uh, if I could film inside and they said mm, maybe they gave me a little bit of a look and I said well you know it's I showed them my camera I said it's a little camera you know it's not gonna bother anyone and then they said what are you filming for and I said I'm filming for a YouTube channel and they said well you can't do that. You can film for, or you can take pictures and film for, like, just for yourself, but not for a YouTube channel. And I said, okay, is there any way that I, you know, do I have to talk to somebody about it? And they said, you can contact the director of the museum and see if you can get permission to film and put stuff on a YouTube channel. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. So, we're going to do that. That's going to be our mission. Our mission now is to film the inside of uh, the Jesuit block and I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this I'm hoping we're gonna be able to do this and I'm hoping we're gonna be able to get permission um, to film in there before I like have this video scheduled to be released because I film stuff you know ahead of time and then I release it later so this is being filmed right now but um, you know, I'm still putting videos up that are like from Buenos Aires where I was last month. So who knows, maybe we'll be able to get permission. And if we are able to get permission, then I really do want to be able to film inside. That would be really cool. So we found this at the uh, university at one of the sites. It looks like an archeological dig site, which is really cool and it's preserved. Uh, there's a couple of security guards here that are closing up. So I asked them if I could film a little bit right before they closed and they said yes, but it's actually really cool. This is like some of the old parts of the Jesuit block, the underground parts, like underground chambers, and uh, a preserved stairway coming up here from the underground. Different rooms and chambers with hallways connecting them. And over here, I could tell from reading the sign, which I understood probably 70%, like I understand most things. This is like an old cistern. And they had a whole system of underwater pipes that would move water underneath the floors. And this was all excavated and discovered, I guess, in the, uh, in the 20th century, around the like 1940s, 1950s. But it's pretty amazing that they had all this uh, this underground stuff underneath the uh, underneath the old construction, underneath the old buildings. So we got to get out of here. The security guards are going to kick us out. We got to go. So 
So we're here at La Cripta Jesuitica, the Jesuit crypt, and uh, it's in a really interesting spot. This is like a shopping street. This is a pedestrian shopping street. You can see like in every direction, there's just people. It's all shops. And then like right here, right here on the corner, there is uh, the crypt. Right here. And there's even a sign, uh, like up here. Oh, disculpe. There's a sign right here that says, this is not a passage to get underneath the avenue. Because that's what it looks like. When you go in here, it looks like this is a passage to get underneath Avenida Colón. Anyway, we're gonna go down here and check it out. So this is, uh, these are images of the excavation in 1989 when it was discovered. This was a Jesuit crypt back in the 1600s. And then in the 1700s, in 1767, I think, when the Jesuits were expelled um, from Argentina and from all, like all the Spanish colonies, really. Um, that's an interesting story. We could probably talk about that a little afterwards. Uh, but after that, this, they, you know, they, they left and they abandoned the crypt and everything sort of um, was left here. And I guess it got buried when they were expanding the city in the 1800s. The roof caved in, it all got buried and wasn't discovered again until 1989 when they were laying telephone cables. The telephone company dug in here to lay underground telephone cables and they discovered this, this amazing underground crypt. So basically, this was used for almost a century as a crypt. Then it was, <laughs> then it was buried for almost a century or more than a century, uh, or just abandoned, then buried for a century and then excavated. I mean, think about that. <laughs> this amazing all of this was underground. Nobody knew it was here. It's how most archaeological discoveries happen, right? Telephone company decides to, uh, yeah, here it is right here. I mean, this is of course in Spanish, but this is explaining that the telephone company wanted to lay new cables and they discovered all of this. I realize we've been going to a lot of uh, different Jesuit historical sites, the Jesuit, uh, the Jesuit block and uh, that Jesuit church. And now we're here at the Jesuit crypt. Haven't really talked about what a Jesuit is or who the Jesuits are. And uh, if you don't know, I'll give you a very, very brief history. Basically, it's an order, a religious order um, of the Catholic Church founded back in the 1500s, mid-1500s, by uh, Saint Ignatius de Loyola, who at the time was not a saint, he was just a student at a university in Paris. And he and uh, a few of his friends, who were devout Catholics, decided to form the Society of Jesus. And uh, they, um, they followed you know, the, the orders of the Catholic Church, but also committed themselves to uh, basically, going the society would go anywhere that the church um, deemed that people, you know, the church needed help doing, you know, missionary work and things like that. And so, as the uh, the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, the Order of Jesuits grew, they um, they went all over the world, and so a lot of the um, the churches here and a lot of the really old buildings and whatnot here in Cordoba. Uh, were Jesuit because they had a very, um, uh, a very like uh, large um, order here, and so that's basically it. That's the the story of the Jesuits. Now the expulsion, which I mentioned when we were coming in, um, as the Jesuits' influence grew in different countries and different colonies, you know, Spanish colonies, Portuguese colonies, and places all over Europe. Uh, the the regional um, the, like the regional governments, 
the monarchies and the vice royalties in power, they, how do I put it? They began to become a little bit um, afraid or, or there was tension between them and the Jesuits because the Jesuits were very closely tied to the Pope. And the, uh, a lot of, um, in a lot of places in Europe and in the colonies here, the uh, regional governments did not want um, outside influences to uh, basically compete with them for power. So in the mid-1700s, in Portuguese territories, in Spanish territories, the Jesuits were expelled. And so places like this that were used and populated by Jesuits in the 1600s sort of were abandoned during the 1700s after the expulsion. So that's how this ended up being abandoned. And it's how, it's how it ended up ultimately being rediscovered in, uh, in 1989 because of the telephone company. Okay, so we did it. We got permission. We got permission to go into uh, the museum here at the Jesuit block and to film some stuff. But the collections are all behind locked doors and you have to get permission ahead of time have someone unlock the doors for you so you can go in and take a look. Now the chapel that we saw, uh, the old Jesuit church, that's actually still owned by the Jesuits. So it opens on kind of like a different schedule. And um, Guadalupe, the nice woman who uh, gave me permission to film in here and was explaining things, she said that um, it should probably be open later. So hopefully it will be open and we'll be able to film in there. But for now, we're going to be able to film like the uh, collection museum collection rooms in here and uh, and yeah so let's let's check that stuff out we also found out that um, the ranches there are some ranches in different areas around in like smaller towns outside of the city of Cordoba one of them's up in Jesus Maria there's actually a museum up there as well in Jesus Maria it's like the uh, National Jesuit Museum I guess um, it's at that ranch and these ranches that they had, uh, they used the production from the ranches, mostly like wine that they were, they were growing grapes for wine. And they would sell that in order to make money to support um, the, uh, like the building of the university and the, the founding of the university here because the National University of Cordoba was founded and operated by the Jesuits. So there you go. They used the, uh, the ranches um, out there, the profits that they made from the ranches to support the academics here in the city of Cordoba. All right, so uh, we're going to take a look around and uh, see what we can see. So this is like the central court of the building. It's basically a big square. In the center, we have this. There's a plaque. It shows the manzana. Jesuitica. And the statue is uh, Bishop Trejo y Sanabria, Fernando Trejo y Sanabria. So this guy was a Catholic bishop, and he is the guy who basically granted um, rent. You know, he allowed the Jesuits to rent this area, and he actually put it in his will that they would be continued to allow to rent this um, this space for the uh, for the university and that's why he is if you can see he's like has a pen in his hand because he's signing his will so this is the graduation hall of the university and this is they do like thesis defenses here they have special ceremonies of the university here it's really cool old architecture very 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 cool that painting there is uh, Bishop de Trejo y Sanabria same uh, same guy as the statue out in front all these old chairs very very cool I mean this is like <laughs> it feels it's very very quiet in here but I can imagine you know, having a ceremony in here, thesis defense or something like that. 
being, you know, having all the all the different uh, faculty members of the university sitting here, and you have to give your uh, your defense. Maybe you sit in the hot seat right there. Very cool. Okay, so here we are. This is the Hall of Cartography. This collection is really pretty amazing. 1588. So that's like a map of Europe in 1588. It's, not, it's pretty good. It's honestly pretty, uh, pretty close, pretty close to the actual map. Pretty good, pretty good. Now this, this is really cool, 1561. So this is like a very, very early map of South America. You can see the, there's Brazil. You can see the rivers. Oh, there's, okay, so there's like Rio de la Plata, right there, the little, uh, the little river right there. It's hard to see, but um, that's, that's where Buenos Aires would be. Even a part, a little part of Africa over there, the coast. Some maps here from the 1590s with North America connected to South America here and here. It's really cool to see like the progression of how the maps got more and more accurate because you, know, you look at that first map from 1561 and you'll get this map 1690, like 130 years later. And it's much more accurate. They have a lot more of the rivers mapped out. These maps and seeing how, how they uh, developed. Like this is 1787, I don't know if you can see that. 1787, this one. You can see, El, uh, yeah, Rio de la Plata there. Seventeen sixty seven this also. So this is seventeen sixty seven is the year that the Jesuits were expelled from uh, from the Spanish colonies. They have North America mapped out, Mexico, the Caribbean. I mean this is a very <laughs> this is a quite accurate map, even in seventeen sixty seven. The other amazing thing about these maps is they, I mean, they're incredibly well preserved, right? Like they're really, really well preserved, which I think is really great. I like this map, it's from 1762, but I mean, look at it, it's like very, very well preserved. I have some old history books here also. Historia de los intentos de Francisco de Miranda. So like, attempt, his attempt to affect a revolution in South America and the history of it. I mean, it's a very, very old book, of course, 1810. But still, they have it and it's preserved here. Here's some maps from the 1800s. This is 1806, so that's like the year that the uh, English invaded. They came in and <laughs> sacked Buenos Aires and our boy Sobramante grabbed the money and ran over here to Cordoba. I mean, <laughs> took all the silver with him. But, you know, like I said, in his defense, he did try to come back and retake Buenos Aires. He just wasn't completely successful in doing so. There's a whole video about that. You can check it out. I'll put the link in the description. It's a fun one. Our guy, Rafael de Sobramante. I wonder when the first, I wonder if we can find the first map where the, it, it's like actually referred to as Argentina in some way, right? Oh, here we go. Wait, hold on a second. Uh, this one says Republic, Republic Argentine. Of course, this is like a map in, in French. This is a French map. America. Uh... Hmm. Still, it still says Rio de la Plata. I want to find the first map. I want to find a map where it just says, you know, like Argentine Confederation or Argentina specifically. Let's see. 
take a look over here. Oh, this is a South Amer map of South America and its political divisions from 1860. Oh, yeah, okay, so the Argentine Confederation. Here's like a real close-up map of Argentine Confederation. It shows like the different uh, provinces. You can see Cordoba in the middle, Corrientes, Misiones, Buenos Aires. Oh, and here's uh, 1773, the dress and the manner of living of the Spaniards in South America. So that's 1773, this is like what they would be dressed like. That's like a little bit before our uh, our video on Sobramante. Sobramante was maybe like 20 years later, so the fashion, the fashion may have changed a little bit, but this is basically, that was it. That's how they looked. Playing a lute and hugging a rabbit. It looks like that little kid. <laughs> so this is the Hall of Incumcabula, which is like a hall to the history of, of bookmaking, basically, and how books uh, developed over the years, how they were printed, all donated by uh, this guy, who uh, I, I read actually was a, an alumnus of the university. They've got these rolled texts. Where they would, you know, it would be written and then rolled, the entire thing rolled up. It's really, really old. I mean, you can tell, you can just tell how old these are just by looking at them. They would write, re like, religious texts on here. These are 14, manuscripts from 1420. Of course, all in Latin, it looks like these. It's a bit of a glare from the lights here, so it's a little hard to see, but very, very cool. And then they have this whole collection of old, old books. I mean, look at these. Old bound books. Some of these are, are missing. They have like cardboard placeholders here. I would imagine that's maybe because like maybe they're out of the collection right now and they're being studied somewhere or they're missing from the collection. I'm not sure. Here's a antifonario. So that's like a I think it's like a choir, a choir book. People in the choir would read from that during ceremonies. So these here in the center are showing off printing marks. So the printer, right, would have a mark that they would make on books that they printed. So you can see these printing marks here. From different printers. This one's from like way back, 1492. So in here, this is the Jesuit collection. This is like the collection of Jesuit artifacts, specifically. Um, I apologize for my squeaky shoes. They squeak. <laughs> they squeak on this floor. We've had this problem before, but you know what? We go with it. It's fine. They have a very, very large collection here. I mean, it goes... It's three rooms. It goes all the way down into there. Bargueño, Bargueño with base. Small piece of furniture. Contains small drawers used to organize and transport information. Very cool. Very cool. There's a book over here. Oh, okay, cool. Art. Like uh, lithographs, I think it looks like. Here's one of illustrations of like plants and natural things. Another one of plants. This one looks like it has animals in it as well. 
then over here. Yeah, more birds. So they were doing, you know, studies on different uh, species native to the Americas over here. They put their information in these books. As I said, this was all a university. The Jesuits were here studying. It was all academic. And the ranches that they had out, um, out in the countryside, which we will visit one of them. Uh, that'll be in the next video. We, uh, they were using the profits from those to pay for all the, uh, the study, the, ac the academics and everything that was going on here. Here's another one. This was illustrations of uh, plants and different botanical things. It's from 1619, this one. That's like right after. I mean, they, they purchased the, or they signed the lease, you know, the, to rent this area from the Catholic Church in like 1613. So this is really just like six years later. They were already, they already had a whole book like this. They got to work. They got to work quick. So this, I guess, was the original library also, this area. And you can see, like, the brick, all this, like, brick and stone. This is all original, you know? This is the original, original building that they built, you know, back in the 1600s. And this was the first library. Now they've turned it into the uh, Hall of Jesuit History. It's an old chair belonged to Dean Gregorio Funes, first chancellor of the university who was born in Latin America. So there it is. Dean Gregorio Funes. This was his chair. Right there. That's where his butt was. It's a very historic chair. Oh, this just keeps going there ton of old books here. All these old books from the library, from the old Jesuit library. Very cool. Some more uh, guides to plants and nature. Another old chair. Let's see whose chair this was. Antique leather armchair that belonged to the hall of graduation. Oh, okay, so the graduation hall that we saw, those new chairs, must those must be like re reproductions. But this is one of the old, original ones, the only one left. Wow. Some famous butts probably sat there, that's for sure. This is going to be a very squeaky shoe session. <laughs> this section of the video, I can tell. Very squeaky. That's okay. Here's the last room here in the hall. Wow, this is really cool. And luckily, you know, when I'm here, the day that I came, it's not very crowded. I'm here on a Monday, not very crowded. You have to, you know, ask to be let into each one of these rooms. So, so they're not gonna let it get too crowded in here. So if you do come and decide to visit, you'll probably have like, you know, more or less have the whole place to yourself, which is really cool. We always like that. I mean, it's fun to go to museums and see stuff and you know, go to old historical sites and whatever. But a lot of the times, those places are really, really crowded, if they're really popular especially. And sometimes it's really nice to just get, you know, get the whole place to yourself. You just walk around and it's almost like you own the place. Of course you don't. Everything's behind glass. You can't touch anything. People get mad if you touch stuff. But it is really nice. It's really nice to have, like, to be able to, like, explore this exhibition completely alone and not, like, have, not have, not, not, not necessarily that, like, other people are going to bother me, but, like, I worry that I'm going to bother other people because I'm, like, walking around, you know, talking to, talking to all of you, talking to myself, basically, like an idiot. Anyway, this is very cool. This is a very cool hall. I think we're going to move on to whatever's next. 
That was actually the last of uh, all the exhibition halls. So I think now, we're hopefully, the church will be open. Um, I think to get into it, we have to go around the corner. So let's take a look. Let's go say goodbye and thank you to Guadalupe, who gave us permission to film it here. And, uh, and then we'll go see if we can get inside that church. inside the church. I'm gonna actually not talk during this. I'm gonna keep my camera down, kind of out of the way, and a little inconspicuous. So, uh, yeah, this is gonna be sneaky filming inside the church. Mm -hmm. 